This is another one of those questions where you will either think strategically right away or you will struggle to build some complicated equation because that's the only thing you know, it's the only thing you ever learned in school and you're not able to adapt to the weirdness of the SAT. When I read this, I think about my main math strategy, which is plug points into equations, right? So my answer choices, they look like equations, right? Now, granted, they don't have an equal sign, but I want to put something in for X, right? Because does X matter here? Do they ask me to solve for X? No. X is the number of stations that will be set up for experiment A. It's this variable, right? There could be different numbers that go in for X. But rather than try to create an equation that works for all of those numbers, I'm just going to pick one, follow the instructions in the story, and then test out what I'm given. So let's do the simplest thing, right? Let's pretend that X is 1, right? So that is the, the number of um, stations that are going to be for A, right? So a science teacher is preparing the five stations of a science lab. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each station will either have experiment A materials or experiment B materials, but not both. Experiment A requires six teaspoons of salt and B requires four teaspoons of salt. If X is the number of stations that we set up for experiment A, so I'm saying one, right? So this is my A and these are my Bs, right? So how many teaspoons of salt is that? Well, it says six for A and then these are all four, right? And what we need is uh, if X is the number of stations that will be set up for experiment A and the remaining stations will be set up for experiment B, which of the following expressions represents the total number of teaspoons of salt required? I have a total now, right? And I'm even going to be that super lazy. Just do it in my calculator. 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 22. So let's go over here with it. 22, right? So if I put 1 in for all of these equations, if it does not give me 22, then it can't be a good equation. So this would give me 5, this would give me 10, this would give me 22, this would give me 30. It's C. Guys, this is a 45 second question. The only reason the video is longer is I had to explain exactly my thought process. But this is hard. The SAT considers this a hard question. But I, I, to me, this is super easy. There is no doubt in my mind that C is the right answer. And there is no hesitation when I first see a question like this that I'm going to solve it by plugging points into equations. I genuinely don't even know why 2x plus 20 is the answer. I'm sure there's a reason. I don't care. If you want to put in the comments, fine. I'll give you a little thumbs up, but I'm not going to respond because I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm not interested in proving everything the way your math teacher or your math textbook would. I'm interested in the fastest way possible, finding the right answer. And if instead of thinking about a, an abstract equation that works for every situation, I just narrow my focus to one situation, that's what I want to do. And in a way, this is that arithmetized strategy, right? Because there's nothing saying that only one table, one station is going to have experiment A, right? That's me making that up. But I'm making it up because then I can understand the story and follow the instructions in a way that's very realistic, right? In real life, you're not writing equations to put stuff on a table, right? You're just doing it. And so the more you can get rid of algebra, the more you can take these weird stories and instructions and bring them back to normal instructions that you would follow in real life. If your teacher said, hey, Mike, can you do me a favor and put six te te teaspoons of salt on one table and four on all the others? That would take you, that, that's easy to understand. When it's presented in this kind of SAT way, suddenly it loses that concreteness. And so the more you can bring it back to that, the better. I love this question. This is so great. So hopefully you can feel my excitement through the video. But like, you cannot get this wrong. This is a this is an, a must-get question for everyone, even though the SAT says it's hard. And even though I've never seen anything else like it before. To me, I knew to arithmetize right away. And this becomes, like I said, a 45-second question.